Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for staying late. I know it's late. Um, you know, we beat a, a very good uh, Duke team tonight, and, and they're good because they can do everything. They can score inside out. Uh, we had no answer for uh, Vernon Carey, and we knew it coming into the game. Uh, but we wanted to do a good job of not letting the other guys beat us uh, from the outside. Uh, I thought our guys stepped up completely for the challenge. Um, you know, we had some guys who played really great defense, and guys played in different segments. Uh, I thought Devin Daniels really carried us in the first half, got to the hole. Uh, one of our game plans is we wanted to kind of drive the basketball and not settle for threes uh, because after the BC game, we wouldn't shoot the three very well. And then I thought Markel, DJ, uh, CJ Bryce, all of those guys finished strong. It's a very good win for us. It's a, it's a win that we needed because obviously we just lost one on the road. So uh, excited for our guys. Um, we talked about the last couple of days uh, what a great opportunity this would be, and uh, we stepped up to the challenge. So questions? How do you harness this moving forward for these last five games to close out the regular season? Well, I, I, you know, th we, we're a good basketball team when we've got everybody healthy. Um, and we've talked about that all year long. Um, the only guy that we, we don't have is Pat. And, and obviously, when we add him back, we get guys, who, another guy who can shoot the basketball. Well, we just want to build on it. Um, you know, we, we had won two road games and could have won three road games in a row. And so we had some momentum, even though we lost the BC game. And I thought our guys um, accepted, you know, coming home and did a great job. Our fans were tremendous tonight. Our students were great. Our fans came out for us. Uh, it was a great game for us. It was a tremendous atmosphere, and, and we won a great game. When Markel, when Markel made the acrobatic play in the first two minutes, did you know you were getting good Markel tonight, or did you know even before that? You know, Markel's always good, Joe. You know that. <laughs> no, he, he give that. <laughs> Be a stack of Bibles. There's not a There's a great and a good. Okay. Okay. Great tonight. No, you know, he played, and, and give him credit. Um, I thought in the last couple of days of practice, he's been the guy that's been talking. He's been the guy saying, let's come on, let's play. Uh, he's practiced well the last couple of uh, days, and it carried over to the game. And, and he was a leader, man. He was he was a really good point guard tonight. Uh, got everybody involved, scored when we needed to, uh, played the bulk of the game. Uh, didn't have them, that many defensive breakdowns, so I'm proud of them. You were up 23, and they pretty quickly cut it to 11. What did your guys do to stem the tide and then, you know, ultimately blow them out? Yeah, well, listen, we knew that, um, you know, they, look, they're the number 16 in the country, and, and they're really good. Um, and they won seven in a row, so they wasn't just going to lay down. Uh, and they fought back, uh, but I thought our guys responded well. Uh, we went back to driving the basketball. We had a segment uh, when we got up 23 where I thought we played back on our heels and we played conservative. Uh, we went back to getting offensive rebounds and attacking the paint and, and made some shots. And, and I thought that was a difference in the game. I give our guys a lot of credit. You know, they as they responded, we responded, and I thought we finished the game the right way. Speaking of responses, you kept Manny Bates in the game with four fouls. Fouls that after that, I think a lot of people in the building were going, oh, no. So the decision to keep him in there and then how your team responded to that. Yeah, listen, I, I figured, you know, um, we had no answer for Kerry. And I said if he fouls out, we fouls out, we would go at the end, we would go with uh, DJ, and then I would steal some minutes from Danny. Uh, but he was the only guy that could obviously uh, give him a little problem because of his shot uh, blocking ability. And, uh, and unfortunately, he fouled out. But that was – we knew that uh, – <coughs> I was okay with them feeding the post the remainder of the game because we felt like they couldn't beat us once we had a big lead by just going through carry. And so we wanted to make sure we played one-on-one -on -one in the post. You guys got up to a great start tonight, as you did against Carolina a few weeks earlier in this building. How did you keep up the intensity and, and keep that momentum going and not kind of set yeah, back up? Yeah, I, I didn't think we settled. Um, you know, I thought if you look, look back at the Carolina game, I thought we settled once we got up. We settled and, um, you know, we dribbled, dribbled, dribbled instead of having ball and player movement. Uh, tonight we went into it making sure that I, I wanted to run more sets um, instead of uh, guys just trying to go one-on-one -on -one and make plays. Now, we did that at the end to kill clock, but I wanted guys to have run more sets so we could get some plays off and be able to score that way. Kevin, what changed for DJ in the second half? He was engaged in the first half, two for seven, but six of eight in the second half. Uh, nearly outscored Vernon Carey actually in the second half. I mean, what did you see from him and what changed in his mentality? Yeah, they could have been a little yelling at him at the half. Could have been. I'm not saying that it happened. But it could have been. <laughs> 
No, he responded. He, DJ's such a competitor. Um, and, you know, obviously, um, I, you know, Brandon Curry's good. I, I, I know I've said that five times. And, you know, I, I know DJ wanted to play well and Manny wanted to play well. And I just thought he, he responded and made some plays. Look, he was coming into the game uh, one for 12 from three, and he stepped up and made a big three. That's his last one he's taken for the year, though. So, you know. <laughs> Kevin, CJ said he was thinking of this game more in terms of that you wanted to beat Duke because they were in first place in the league. And you wanted to be too, more so than your NCAA tournament chances. You've talked to us about what this game technically could mean for your NCAA chances too. Have you had that conversation with them or do you just try to keep them in that single day mode? Yeah, I, so what we talked about, Joe, is getting well. We dropped the game at BC. It just happened that we were playing a team that was above us in the standing and they were number six in the country. So we had two opportunities. One of our opportunities, obviously, is to get well because we just lost. But the second opportunity was to beat a team that's higher than uh, higher ranked than us in the conference and also a team that's really good. Uh, I don't really talk about that with those guys. Uh, we just talk about the next game because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that they can handle that. I think if I put pressure on them and say we have to win this game for your NCAA hopes, I'm not sure we respond the same way tonight as we did. So we just talked about his two opportunities that you can take advantage of. And on that note, we have another nationally ranked team coming in here in three days. You have two days to prepare. How will you handle that with your team? Obviously, they're sky high tonight. What do you do the next two days to get them to focus you, on you, Saturday, not tonight? You've got to let me enjoy tonight. Um, <laughs> I, I promise you, if you call Craig or Fred and ask that question tomorrow, I'll give you an answer. But there's no way I'm talking about another team tonight. Okay, this great. Don't worry. Don't worry. Process. Huh? The process. The process. Uh, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> your, your question is very valid and very fair. Um, you know, I don't know. We, we need a little rest, and, and it's a short turnaround. So I'm going to get with my staff after I leave here and decide uh, what we're going to do. We're probably going to take some time and do some yoga tomorrow. And I know that sounds funny, but that's the truth. So you know. On that note, we know when you went on the road, you celebrated with ice cream. How do you celebrate getting a top 10 ring? We happy. I mean, we don't. There's no ice cream for four wins, and uh, we're excited. Um, we moved to eight uh, eight wins in the conference, and uh, we move on to get a chance to play again. That's it. We, we celebrated in the locker room. We were happy. We jumped up and down as we do in everywhere, not because it was a Duke game, but we just move on. Thanks, coach. Guys, drive safe. Thanks, coach.